Hi everyone, it's Hendrik here. My name's Hendrik Varyu. I know uh, some of you know me. I'm a furniture builder, a woodworking instructor, and I'm a chef. But today I'm talking about how to cut your own hair without being a trained barber. As you know, uh, the COVID-19 virus um, came through the world, of course, uh, late 2019 and into 2020. Um, I'm near Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and the virus hit us around the middle of March. <clears throat> so now it's um, going into the end of June. That means a lot of people out there have not been able to get a haircut. Um, Barber shops are just opening. I wouldn't be surprised if they have to close again if the virus picks up again. So anyways, I've been cutting hair for my son and my father for a very long time, for many years. I'm not trained in it at all, but I actually got pretty good at it from uh, cutting their hair for so long. <clears throat> and when this COVID thing hit, I said, well, I'm going to have to try to cut my own hair which sounded pretty crazy, but it went very well, better than I expected. I'm at the point now that I cut my hair using only a single small mirror in front of me. There's no mirror behind me. I do it completely without seeing what I'm doing at the back of my head. When I'm done, I will show you the back of my head so you can see what happened <laughs> and see what kind of damage I did, but um, I'm actually able to do it completely blind at this point with just one mirror in front of me. Now right now I don't even have a mirror in front of me because I'm recording this on my iPad and I'm just looking in the screen as I do it. Let's look at some of the equipment that I use. It's some simple stuff you can buy anywhere and then we'll get to it. Okay so what I have here and just so you know I'm actually usually cut my hair and my family's hair in my woodworking shop because the hair can just fall onto the concrete floor and I can sweep it up and there's no mess in the house. Um, so you're looking at some of my equipment here, which is just sitting on my woodworking bench. Okay, so this is a wall hair cutting kit. You can buy it anywhere. Walmart, Canadian Tire, you name it, any kind of department store. So I have a large uh, electric razor here that'll do most of the work. And then the kit comes with a small one, which is battery powered, and that's just to do a little trimming around the bottom, at the back, around the ears, and so on. A pair of scissors. I have a, a better pair that I purchased online here. And then you have all the attachments, which will cut your hair to different lengths. So one inch, three quarter inch, half inch, three eighths inch. And then I have a quarter inch here. 1 8 inch here for if you want it really short. <clears throat> a little brush to brush uh, stray hair off your neck and a comb. Um, I also have a spray bottle that I will use when I'm cutting the top. Okay, so I'm going to do most of the hair cutting um, with the, the large razor and these various attachments. Oh, and I'll, let me just point out that this kit comes with this right ear taper and left ear taper, and I do not use those, okay? <clears throat> I just use the straight ones here. All right, so I'll show you how I approach it, cutting my hair uh, across the uh, two sides of my head and around the ears. Then I'll do the entire back, and the top will be done primarily with scissors. Okay, so we're going to get started here. Let me just show you the razor here. One of the things you may not know about is this lever here. When you push the lever towards the top of the razor, you'll notice that these two moving parts up here get closer together. Okay, when that happens, the razor is going to cut more hair off. And when you pull it back like this so they're farther apart, you're going to cut less hair off. Okay, when the 
when the uh, lever is towards the back of the razor. So when I want to cut it aggressively, I'll have it completely towards the top here, okay, which is called the closed position. The open position will cut less hair off and that'll be better if you're trying to blend the cut from a higher number towards a lower number and sort of fade it in. All right. Um, now here I have a one of the attachments to go on the razor and this one is labeled one inch which is way too long to cut the sides of my head. I'm going to use that to go all the way up through the middle even though I prefer to do all of that cutting by scissors. Okay, but I'm just going to show you how you can run it through anyway. And if one inch is more than your current hair length, you're not going to cut anything off anyway, so no harm done. Let's get rid of the glasses. Hopefully I can see well enough to do this. Now later I'm going to wet my hair to cut with the scissors, but right now I'm just going to leave it dry. I find it easier. The other thing to keep in mind is that I find if you let your hair grow way too long, it's much, much harder to cut. I'm cutting my hair maybe once every three weeks, maybe four at the most. But I find if you cut it when it's just a little bit on the long side and basically what you need is a trim, it's just that much easier to do it right every time. Okay, so do it more often, but it won't take you as long. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to put the razor on the position where it will cut more aggressively and I've got the one inch attachment. I'm going to just run straight up the middle, see if it cuts anything. Okay, so you can hear it is definitely cutting something off, but not a lot because my hair isn't super long. So I'm just basically, if I run it through here, obviously it will cut nothing because that isn't anywhere near an inch. But I'm just going to cut from front to back, sort of overlapping a little bit. Remember I'm a woodworker, so I'm used to doing things like hand planing. I don't recommend you attempt to cut your hair with a router Certainly not a table saw. Hand plane, maybe. Okay, so that's not going to cut anymore. It's a good exercise because there's no harm done. Now, what I can do now is take off the one inch and go to a three quarter inch. I could do the same thing again. Then I can go to half inch. Half inch is getting kind of short though for the top of my head, I think. Okay, what I prefer to do is to wet it, to use my fingers as a guide and start cutting with scissors. Um, but you get the idea. Start with the one inch and then if you want it shorter, go with the three quarter. What I'm gonna focus on is cutting from here back and down, all the way around the ear. Okay, and because I have a beard, I, I don't normally have a beard, but I've been growing it out for a while, I would normally start cutting here to cut the sideburn, but instead I'm just going to set my razor to whatever size I want and start working through here. The best strategy is to start with the razor uh, attachment cutting longer than your hair actually is, so nothing happens. And then you go down progressively until you hear it just trimming, and you can work your way down as far as you want to go. Okay, but better to leave it too long until you really know what you're doing instead of cutting uh, way too short and giving yourself uh, a bald spot by mistake. Okay, so I'm going to go switch that out. Okay, so I've just switched this out to a 3 8 I don't know if you can see that upside down there. <clears throat> 3 8 attachment. Uh, 10 millimeter if you're a metric person. As a woodworker in Canada, we tend to do what the United States does, and we're still talking about thousands of an inch and fractions like three eighths. All right, I'm going to use that three eighths. I know it's too long, but I'm going to work my way through the sides here and around the ears and up the back. 
knowing that that probably isn't going to cut much off because my hair isn't super long. But again, start big, work your way down. Let's, let's give it a shot. Now let me mention that I have the lever right now in the more aggressive position, so it's actually going to cut more aggressively. If you want it, you could put it in the position where it will cut less, just to kind of practice, and then you can bring it back to the point it'll cut more if you're kind of nervous the first time. So I'm start. I'm going across here. I'm sort of leaving the top for later, but right across here, I'll do a band. I'll work my way down, go right around the ear, kind of overlapping every time. Now you might be ambidextrous, be able to switch hands. I prefer my right hand a lot. That's what I do with all my woodworking. Now you might be worried you're going to cut your ear, but um, it's not easy to do. You can get your wife to cut your hair for you. Now you're going to see your ear get cut. Okay, so that's actually cutting not too much, but more than I expected, which is good. It's looking, it's looking much better that way. Now I can also come in behind the ear and go up in the other direction. Okay, so remember all I have to see right now in front of me is an iPad. And normally I just have a small, <clears throat> small mirror propped up on my table saw. I'm standing right in front of the table saw doing this. And we'll worry about more detailed trimming later with the small battery powered razor. Okay, so at some point you can hear that the razor's not doing much more work. It's already cut to that level and it's not going to take any more. It's like cutting your lawn. You can go and cut the whole lawn five times, but after the first time, it's not going to cut more off the next time. All right, let's try the other side now. So again, the razor lever is set to the uh, closed position cutting more aggressively, but you could set it to the open position and cut less off until you're more comfortable. All right, so I'm just, I'm just ending right, I guess looking at the front of my face, I kind of think of this, this corner of my forehead as kind of the transition between the top hair and the side hair. Now I can continue to do this after changing the attachment. Go from 3 8 inch to quarter inch and even 1 8 inch if you want to go really short. If you do this haircut more often you may only have to do it one time and not have to go any lower. All right, so now let's tackle, let's tackle the back of the head. Okay, so the first couple times I did the back of my head, I did it in the bathroom with one mirror in my hand, small mirror and another mirror behind me so I could see. It's actually still pretty hard to see. I do it completely by feel now. So I'm gonna bring the razor in here I'm going straight up. It's, it sounds crazy to even attempt it without being able to see, but you can't cut any deeper than that razor is set for anyway. Okay, so I'm going right from the bottom all the way up. There's a point on your head right in the middle at the very back top 
I think of it almost as uh, if you look at a fruit like an avocado or a mango, there's a point where you have the stem end where the fruit was attached to the tree. I think of that point almost like that. It is actually a little pointy there. So that's as high as you want to go. And in fact, even before I get to that point, I start curving the razor so that as you approach the top, it's not going to cut as deep, right? It's full depth when you're holding the razor flat. But as you angle like this, as you get towards the top of your head, it's cutting less. So I'm going up here, I'm moving over towards the other side, maybe just half a, raver, a razor's width at a time. Yeah, at this point I find it easier to, <clears throat> easier to feel what I'm doing by not even looking in the mirror or at the camera right now because I'm concentrating on where I feel the razor on my head. Remember, just try to overlap strokes, kind of like you would with a hand plane, if you know what that's like, if you're a woodworker. And if you happen to miss a spot, you're gonna come back to it. You can do it multiple times. That can only cut the amount of hair off that it's designed for. In this case, 3 eighths of an inch. All right, now I'm gonna come in here. This is probably <clears throat> where if you're ambidextrous, you're gonna switch to your other hand, but I don't feel comfortable with it. So I'm just gonna do it like this. You know, a lot of people try to do a soft haircut, but it's just a buzz cut. Well, that's easy because you're just basically shaving the entire head the same way. This is different. Okay, so it doesn't seem, the razor doesn't seem to want to cut anymore. I know you can't see the back of my head, neither can I. But I'm going to keep going. And when I think I have it at the stage I want it at, I'm going to use two mirrors in my bathroom to see what happened back there. Now I'll tell you that it, it, it works out amazingly well. I'm shocked at how, how I can do it without even seeing it. The only part that I need a little help with is the very bottom around the neck would be a little bit of extra hair growth on the neck there. So I'll get my daughter or my wife or my son to uh, just with the mini razor kind of straighten out the very bottom, but everything else will be completely cut. All right, I'm gonna switch now from the 3 8 to a quarter. I'm gonna work on this a little more, make it even shorter. Then we'll do a little trimming around the ear with the mini razor, and then we'll tackle the top with the scissors. All right, so I'm switching now to the quarter inch attachment here. And here, pop that in. Here's where you might want to go to the open position. Move the lever all the way to the bottom of the razor. Okay, what that does is make the cutting plates here farther apart from each other and it will cut less aggressively. So now when I'm doing the very bottom of the neck and I'm sort of flicking upwards, it's going to feather the quarter inch setting into the 3 8 setting a little bit nicer, right? So you don't have kind of a hard line between the two cutting depths, okay? If I want to be really aggressive in here to make it a lot shorter, then I can bring the lever up towards the top of the razor and it's going to cut more aggressively. So again, it's up to you. I would say keep it at the back, less aggressive until you get a good feel for it. All right, so let's try that a little bit. I think I'll tackle the back first this time. Okay, so right now I'm just working on the very bottom. And as soon, <clears throat> I'm starting low on the neck, so it's not cutting any hair right away. 
And as I hear it cut, I was going to say wood, but as I hear it starting to cut hair, maybe just go an inch or so and I start flicking it up so that it doesn't cut all the way up on my head. I'm just trying to feather quarter inch into three eighths. Now if I wanted the whole back of my head to be shorter then I would have just gone all the way up like I did last time. But I was thinking the back felt pretty good at 3 8 So that's all cut 3 8 but now I'm doing quarter inch only at the bottom and feathering it in. And I might even do the 1 8 You know we're getting into some hot weather here, 30 degrees without the humidity. Maybe 35. You know, some people down in the southern U.S. think uh, we're living in igloos up here, but we get some pretty hot weather in the summertime, very humid. All right, let's try it over here now. It doesn't matter if I go across my sideburns or even my beard because the beard is so short it's not going to cut anything so it'll just start to cut where it gets long don't worry about it behind the ear I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back the other way okay, if you see your ear lying on the floor you did something wrong Okay, so that's cutting uh, just a bit. Again, if I want to cut more, move this lever to the very top. That's more aggressive. Or you don't have to go all the way. You can go anywhere in between. And that's how you can control it better. Now, I'll tell you while I'm doing this, I'm starting to wonder if I'll even go back to my barber. I don't mean any disrespect to him, but I'll tell you something. Every time I've cut my hair this way, everyone thinks I actually went to a barber. It works out really well. Now, my barber is only a 10 minute drive from here, but it's not uncommon that I have to sit there about 40 minutes, even an hour. You know, be about four or five people ahead of me. He doesn't take appointments. So 10 minutes there, 10 minutes to drive back, 40 to 60 minutes waiting, and then 15 to get it cut. It takes me longer than 15 to cut it. I'm not a professional. But you add up all that, you're looking at an hour and a half. And I'm paying for it, right? So... Even if this takes me 30 to 40 minutes, which is pretty slow, you know, I still got to do the top here. I'm still way ahead time-wise, and I'm not paying anything, so. Until I'm so old, I can't reach the back of my own head. Maybe I'll just keep doing this. All right, I'm going to switch to a 1 8 now, and just maybe do a little more trimming at the very bottom of the, of the back of my head. Okay, one eighth now, much shorter, very short in fact. Um, I'm going to do uh, less aggressive on the lever here towards the back, okay, the, the open position. And I'm just going to do the very back down at the neck area, kind of curving away from it. And, um, you know, you can always ask someone in your family to do that part for you if you really struggle with this not seeing, you know, doing it blind. Um, I can tell you that doing it with a small mirror in this hand and another mirror behind you is harder than you think because, um, well, I need glasses normally and I'm not even wearing my glasses now, so it's not in my way. I could put them back now to cut the back, but the point is uh, looking in that mirror is uh, kind of far away and it's not that easy to see 
okay? You could get someone else to do that part for you if you need to, but if you practice, I think you'll get there. Okay, so that's one eighth inch, but less aggressively set on the open setting with the lever. As soon as I hear hair cutting, flick it up so it doesn't cut that depth all the way up your head. You're basically tapering the hair. Now let me just see. Actually, that isn't too bad. I'm far from ambidextrous with the woodworking tools, that's for sure. I would never use a hand plane left-handed, but just doing this little bottom part, that feels all right. All right, let's do a little bit of trim work around here with the miniature razor. I'll show you what I do at the top. And then I'm going to head to my bathroom just to show you the back of my head, show you the parts that maybe you need a little help with around the neck, and that's it. Okay, I got the little miniature razor here, battery powered, so I don't have a cord to worry about. Now, if I didn't have the beard here, I would be turning this on and making a hard line right here and coming down. Okay, but I'm just letting that blend in. So I'm just going to work around the ear. Again, that could easily be something you ask uh, someone else in your household to help you with. Um, not so hard here, but right in behind the ear. But let's face it, that hair is behind your ear. <laughs> Nobody can really see it. It's not the end of the world, as long as you don't make some huge error and cut way the heck up here, right? So I'm just going to turn that on. Just come in here a little bit. I would say less is more. Actually, I have a little bit of trouble seeing without my glasses. One of my eyes is nearsighted and the other farsighted. So, it's tricky. You can see some hair right, right in there. I remember one of the signs that you're getting older when you go to the barber. I can remember the first time this happened. Shocking. Is that the barber's going at your nose hairs and your eyebrows. Wow. First time that happened. You know, I thought that was for old men. What's going on? Apparently we're all getting a bit older. Okay, so in behind the ear there, that's really hard to see. Again, get someone to help you if you need to, but it's really not a big deal because it isn't highly visible. Most important area is right there, just around the very top of the ear. Yeah, and just be careful. I'm just using the corner of the razor there to make sure I don't cut too much off. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the middle here. So what I'm gonna do now is get my spray bottle, spray some water in there, and I'm gonna use my scissors. Okay, so I got a pair of scissors here that came with the kit. I used that for quite a while. They're not as sharp as I would like right now. And of course, I am always sharpening chisels and hand planes, so I could do that myself. But they're not the best quality scissors. I bought this set online. And uh, this one is much, much better, I find. So we're going to do a bit of cutting up here. I'm just going to wet my hair. Now you can use a comb to comb the hair back and then cut the hair above the comb. You'll see a lot of barbers do that or a lot of people doing their own haircuts will use it. Um, I've always found my hands to be more comfortable, more reliable. I guess I'm used to working with my hands and I just have a good feel for where my hands are. So what I'm going to do here is just go like this and any hair that's above my fingers will get cut okay now I'll tell you that it's actually 
you could actually, especially when the scissors are, are really sharp, you could cut the top of your finger a little. I mean, it's not going to be easy because you're parallel to the fingers. But um, one of the things about looking in the mirror when you do something is that left is right and right is left. And it's really, it's really easy to, you know, kind of have to think differently. If you're looking at the back of your head while you're cutting in a, in a, a mirror behind you, you'll be moving your hand left and it's actually going right. It's very confusing. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep grabbing here and bringing the scissors sort of just touching my fingers but not close enough to cut the skin itself. See here, I sometimes think I'm going backwards and I'm actually going forwards, that kind of thing. I know if, if you happen to be a woodworker, you know, maybe you make a mistake, you end up cutting a finger off. I have 10 fingers, even though I've been furniture building for 24 years. Never lost one yet. Can you imagine if my first finger I cut off was doing a haircut? People would be saying, you should have bought a saw stop. A saw stop brand of scissors, right? If you know, if you're a woodworker, you know what that means. If you're not, you're going to have to Google it. All right, so I'm just going to trim like this. Starting at the front, working my way back, all the way back, pretty much to the very back here. That's about as far back as I'm going to go. Because when I was shaving the back with the razor, I came right up to that sort of crust at the top of your head. Okay, you can see how, you can see how well that's going already. So I'm gonna do another th maybe four or five minutes worth off camera so I don't completely bore you to death. And then we'll see where we're at at the end. Okay, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not quite done yet, but I just wanted to mention <clears throat> somehow based on the lighting and how I look on the iPad screen compared to on a mirror, I actually set up my normal mirror. This is what I use, just a small little mirror. Okay, I set up this mirror on the front of my table saw. And I can tell you immediately, it's so much easier for me to do this scissor cutting in front of that mirror instead of on this iPad screen. I'm getting a massive glare across the back of my hand here from the lighting. Where, where, where I'm, whereas uh, when I move over to the mirror, it's not the same effect. And I just wanted to mention before I finish up, I still have a bunch to do at the back here around the side. I just want to mention that when I grab the hair like this, I'm finding it much easier if I tilt the scissors backwards, okay, so that the back blade of the scissor comes in behind the hair above my fingers and once I know that that hair is against it then I'm tipping the scissors down into a parallel uh, parallel to the fingers and doing the cut. I'm finding it much easier to sort of judge where that hair is if I do it that way. Okay there's all kinds of excess at the back here. So you see I'm tilting back bring it against the hair so I know I'm there, and then rotate down and do the cut. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more off camera. In here, this back corner, and I'll just basically work my way through everywhere again. You know, there'll be spots where you got most of it, but maybe you missed just a little bit here on one side. And take your time. This is gonna take, you know, for me, it might take me a full 10 minutes. For you, it may take you 20 minutes the first time, but you're learning. Okay, let me finish that up and then we'll see what, what we have. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm getting uh, pretty much near the end here. Can maybe get a little bit more in there. Around the back, it's a little bit difficult to reach in to some of those back areas. 
but I think you get the picture. I find that if I use my my index finger and my middle finger, pinch the hair there and then cut right above those fingers, I find that's perfect for me. I always comb my hair straight back so that's just kind of spiky at the front. And you and I both know that every time you get your hair cut, it's always better two or three days later. It needs just a little bit of time to grow in. So usually the first day it's okay. Three, four days later it's, it's feeling a lot better. All right, so we're gonna go upstairs now. We're gonna go in my bathroom, show you the back. Maybe do a little trimming at the very bottom. And honestly, that's the point I would call in one of my family members to just straighten out the bottom because it's incredibly difficult to do that on my own. Okay, so here I am in my uh, upstairs bathroom with a mirror behind me. And normally holding a mirror in front of me with one hand and holding the small razor in the other. Let me just see if I can show you in the mirror what the haircut looks like up to this point. You can see in the neck area here, there's all kinds of kind of fuzz. All right, so I've just cut that using the two mirrors and using the little miniature razor. I have to admit that I don't think I can do it while holding the iPad because I have to do it with my right hand, right? I can't do it with my left hand. But again, this is one of the hardest parts because I'll have to get really close to the mirror and every time I think I'm moving the razor to the left, it's actually going right and vice versa. Or if you're just trying to, you know, twist your razor, you think you're twisting left and you're twisting right. It's actually very confusing. So I usually try it. Try not to be too aggressive with it, but I usually try it and do a reasonably good job. And then I'll call one of my family members into the bathroom to just kind of straighten it out for me. All right, so there's the final look there. Let me just rotate around. Yeah, so I would say that normally this will take me between maybe well, half an hour to 40 minutes max. Remember, I'm doing all the cutting of the scissors um, just with one mirror in front of me. It's slow, but it's still better than just, you know, basically shaving your entire head one length. You might want to have a little more style and not just a buzz cut. All right, we're going to um, go back into the shop again. Okay, so I hope that this video has been helpful for you. Once the COVID restrictions lift, you want to go back to your barber, you're going to have to do it safely. Okay, now, you may not know this. My name is Hendrik Varju. It's also Enrique Varhu. Okay, I'm half Hungarian and half Mexican, born in Canada. So I teach people to cook. Mexican and Hungarian food. And as I said, I'm also a furniture builder and a woodworking instructor. Okay, so that is my DIY haircut. I hope this video helps you. Please like my video and share it with others. And just remember to check out my websites. I have passionforwood.com, my furniture building and woodworking instruction also. I also sell woodworking DVDs in 23 countries so far to teach you how to do fine woodworking at home. I also have passionforfood.ca. I teach Mexican and Hungarian cooking. And I have a cookbook called Mexican Dinner Parties. You can check it out at mexicandinnerparties.com. All right, I hope, <clears throat> I hope this video helps you and that you're able to cut your own hair at least for as long as you have to, or maybe forever. Thanks for watching.